What's up? Welcome back to Cyrus King Show. This is your host, Cyrus King. And this segment, we'll talk a little organized crime. So when I do organized crime, you can see the little parentheses. So when you get the alert, which I know none of y'all get alerts for my show. I mean, look, I've been away for three years, so it's like I've been really... This might as well be a new YouTube channel, to be honest. Right? But for those who still subscribe, from what I heard, people don't get my alerts anyway. But if you do, you look, you see, organized crime. You, you ain't into that, you don't have to watch. Um, it's interesting in a sense because I've always said when trying to understand politics, true organized crime is one of the hidden pieces from politics. The other one is the occult, right? Now, if you say the occult, particularly the left political leaning people would just have that as conspiracy. Organized crime, they'll pretend doesn't exist. And it's interesting because when you really understand capitalism, you understand, especially if you have a multicultural society, multi-ethnic society, you have to have organized crime. And, you, and especially if your country's urbanized and you have liberalism in it, so what for our question is going to be organized crime, which means it's going to be crime. So first it's going to be crime. And then if your elites are smart, they would take control of the, of the part of it that will be... See, organized crime eventually goes into the parts of areas that's naturally gray. Naturally gray areas, right? So, like, for instance, some, some people may make the argument, so, like, alcohol is legal now. At one time, it wasn't. Sports betting is not, it's not legal everywhere, but it's legal in some places. I'm talking about the states, right? In some states, sports betting is legal now, Right? Casinos was always illegal at first. Well, it was illegal, then they made it legal, right? Then when they made it legal, corporations eventually took it from the mafia, took control of it from the mafia, right? Weed was illegal, still is. Now it's slowly being lifted. So all those are areas, porn, prostitution, all that, all those are areas that are gray. And they will be crime based on that. And if your elites are smart, they organize that crime and they and they keep control of who they want which groups they want to run the show because if you don't control the groups that want the show organized crime is such a part of i guess you could say the whole the lifeblood of capitalism that you will have chaos in your country this is why when you know those of us who understand organized crime for real right when we look at the Israelis, look at the Dutch, look at the French organized crime groups, the more visible Japanese, Yakuza, the British firms, far less known. The British firms is kind of what I'm talking about now. Far less known. British firms, what do, they, what do the British firms do? And I'm talking about organized crime, not, not the law. They occupy certain spots, positions, that the elites would not want outsiders like Russians and Chinese, Albanians, to cover, to do. Because the British firms will be more loyal to England. Just like the Japanese Yakuza is more loyal to Japan than if you let the Chinese and Russians get certain positions. This is common sense. So America was in an interesting place because we never had an Anglo-Saxon mafia. For real. Or at least officially, anyway. We had an Italian mob, Irish mob. Chinese mob, Russian mob, right? Okay, now, when we had those things, eventually, we've made Russia the boogeyman, right? Russians here, really, you see them in New York, one or two spots in LA, but not even, a little bit in LA, but really New York, Brighton Beach, Brooklyn, Florida heavy, that's it. Chinese, they are, they're strong in the East and the West Coast, for sure, right? They got some positions in New York, but here's the thing. The Chinese thongs and Chinese triads are two different groups. See, when the Russians came in, there's more harmony between the Russians in Brooklyn and Miami and the Russians in Russia. Talk about organized crime-wise, right? The Japanese Yakuza, a little bit of them on the West Coast, still more harmony, relationship, almost the same group sometimes as the Japanese groups in Japan. China doesn't have that as much. It's a little better, but not as much. Right? The Italians, believe it or not, never had that either. Like, the Italians, the Italian-American mafia was a separate group than the Italian mafia in Italy. Far question. 
Italy actually has more organized crime groups. It's not even La Cosa Nostra. What is it? The Narangata actually have more strength for Italy than La Cosa Nostra does. So we had organized crime here, but it wasn't under the control of the dominant group, which is the Anglo-Saxon group, right? So the Italians ran stuff for a while. And we had a Jewish mob too, I forgot about that. The Jews sort of became so integrated with, with I guess you could say, civilized life or, or, or legitimate businesses, you don't see them as much on the streets anymore. If you do, it's a Russian Jew or something like that. We're not talking about that, right? Okay. Now, at times, what was the, what was the mob strength, you say? Probably the Golden Ages, Lucky Luciano, those guys, what? 40s to 60s, right? Most likely. Th let's say 30s to the 60s, right? Okay. They were all over. They, they, they were operating in 50, 50 different cities all across America. Right? Totally organized. Organized so much, they never really had a problem with local police. Most of the time, it was the feds they had a problem with. But what does that mean? The feds eventually broke that up. When the feds broke that up. Our government, right? And you know, what happens? We take control of the liquor. We take control of the gambling. We have a legitimate city for prostitution, Vegas. Then... Kosher Nosha, then we like to do, deal with drugs like that. They, they're going to control the drugs to groups, let's say Mexican and South American based, who, while they're brutal, while they're powerful, while they're feared, don't really have the sophistication to challenge you nationwide. So, yes, there's portions of California and Texas and Arizona. There's even port Native American reservations in Minnesota and the Dakotas that the cartels control completely. The elites, which are barricading themselves in the coastal areas, don't even care, right? So what would happen? That will still bring crime, right? That will bring crime. That will bring more crime than it was in the 40s, 50s, 60s. But the elites are making money. And when the mafia was in its heyday, even if there are people who like, when we talk about JFK, right? There are people who say, oh, the mob killed JFK. Or from my point of view, CIA killed JFK and let the mob do it, right? So both, both theories are right. The fact that they could have hit anybody, when they were in their strength, they could have hit you the White House, right? The Anglo-Saxon mob who never became the Anglo-Saxon mob we ain't never going to have that shit. You broke that up, then you, you get groups that can never be as organized, Right? And then you take position, you take industries that you want for yourself and your elites. What happens is you have a lot of chaos that you don't really mind because in the end of the day, you you making it where you 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 huddle up in the coastal areas and the hills, you got your private security, you don't care what happens to this country. If anything, you got you investing in other countries just in case this one falls. And like a virus, you infiltrate that. You, you go on to Costa Rica, you go on to um, Ecuador, you go on to Mexico, you go on to all these places, right? You go on to the Philippines, you do all these things. And the poor sits there and fights and talk about immigration. The poor sits there and votes on elections. The poor sits there and, and working class sits there and tries to what appeal to people's hearts to act better. When it comes to crime, crime is not going to go down. Crime is, crime is going to get worse. Unless you want to do straight police state and have the military lock stuff down, El Salvador stop, right? Which then brings its own problems, right? It's not going to get any better. And it's not going to get any better because you have put the wrong gangsters on a pedestal. And not just even that. True gangsters, you don't even know they exist as organized crime. When they had the movie, I'm going to end it with this. When, when, they had the end, when they had the movie, The French Connection, old school mob guys used to brag when they had Corsican connections. Corsica is an island of France. Kind of said they're French, Italian. Kind of a mixture of both. They used to brag about that French connection. You don't even know French organized crime exists. That's the point. People admire the wrong shit. And... The system has so many layers that it's almost impossible to understand it. You end up being just a keg in the system. That's a, that's a block that gets replaced 
but I never won. And until you truly start to understand that the prison is multi-layered, is it spiritual, is education, but it's also common sense and how you see the world. And gangsters probably shouldn't be put on a pedestal, but gangsters have a rebellious part of them that can be used to inspire you to see the world as it really is. Cyrus King, till next time, peace.